welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet and today I'm here at the east coast of Isla it's yeah chilly it's a bit drizzling it has fog unfortunately there is no wind so it's not really that Scottish of a weather but it, it feels really like Scotland and the bay that is surrounding me here is actually called Bonahaban, which actually means mouth of the river or river mouth and yeah today we're gonna have a look at the distillery of Bonahaban because yeah Bonahaban is more or less a little city in itself but it just consists of the distillery so yeah have fun with the distillery the distillery was built in 1881 and it finished in 1883 and the start of production was at that time and after that a little yeah, village was kind of built around the distillery probably most for the workers who worked at the distillery yeah the distillery was going well it was a uh, well situated with a good uh, supply through the sound of isla and uh, it worked so well that it actually um, never pretty much ceased to to produce except 1930s there was a small uh, closure there but it continued very soon and in 1963 they actually did a doubling of the production they uh, went from two stills to four stills and all of the other equipment respectively yeah so it was going really well uh, it actually then in the late 90s in 1999 it got uh, into the Edrington Trust got sold to the Edrington Trust that is a uh, yeah uh, a charitable foundation that actually owns distilleries and later then it got um, into Burn Stewart and now it got sold to Distel or Burn Stewart was sold to Distel Distel is a big uh, South African spirits company as far as I know and they do still own the distillery and in 2019 they actually invested 10.5 million great british pounds into the distillery into uh, yeah um building into the distillery they got a new visitor center and uh, yeah i'm not quite sure what they else they modernized at the story since i was there in 2012. so yeah let's get in and have a look at the production the distillery of buddha heaven has a lot of storage capacity for malt that is actually yeah it's a historic fact as the distillery was uh, built by connection for the ship and the shipments were in yeah, large quantities but kind of unreliable so you, it was really a necessity to have a lot of storage capacity for malt so they had tons of malt uh, bins and they still do because they, they still work pretty good so why should you change that system Today it's really practical because of the distillery having uh, unpeated and peated malt to have so many mo uh, malt bins. Let me get a bit into history of how peat and unpeated whiskey was here at the distillery. At the very, very beginning, of course, everybody on Isla just had peat, so it was a peated whiskey. Um, later then, it, the distillery got more into that blend business where they supplied their malt into the blends and that's when they really got out of that all that peated spirit business and got into the unpeated business but as they go more and more actually they're pretty much there to uh, do single malt also Buna Haven single malt scotch whiskey is their main focus now they do also do a bit of a peated um, uh, malt as well and yeah the, the variation now is about 60% unpeated 40% peated uh, they still do a little bit of blend but that is yeah kind of a side business for them back in the days it was 90% yeah, or even higher for the blend industry but these days are long gone um, during these days they actually did have the Porteous malt mill that is from uh, 64 and that is a really really old reliable malt and that is used uh, to malt uh, to really yeah, grind down the the barley into a coarse grist so it's ready for the production 
that the story has a massive mash tun. It's actually a bit bigger than they actually needed to be. And um, I think it's back from the days when they used to work for the blend industry where everything was produced en masse. Today they're more into quality and yeah, going for their single malt, so they really have to keep up the, the brand. And they actually did reduce the size of the, uh, the amount of grist they use. They reduced it from 15 tons to 8.5 tons of grist. And uh, what they do with that is just to you know, get better yields. And they actually didn't, don't want to reduce production, so they actually increased the amount of mashings they do per week. So they do 24 mashings uh, per week, and that's 24 uh, hours per week and seven days a week. So they really actually did up the production. With such a massive mash tun, you actually do have to do four waters to do it efficiently. And uh, the last two waters are kind of recycling waters. In the end, you end up with 35,000 liters of water. Another thing what's special about uh, Buna Haven is now that they use their, their draft, not just for cattle feed, they still do that, but they now also use it as biomass. So it actually gets into their biomass reactor and is now producing energy for the distillery, which is really a great idea to run the distillery with kind of the resources you, you have left over this, going into zero carbon and also into zero waste. So that is uh, like, yeah, getting one fly, uh, two flies one, with one slap, yeah. So that is a really a great time. It still has a bit of a reliability issues, but they are really working into that, so they will probably solve that in the near future. So with the 35,000 uh, liters of water, let's head on to the fermentation. The distillery has six massive wash bags with 100,000 liters capacity. They are filled up to uh, 70,000 liters, so it's two uh, mash tons. And they're filling in around 450, 500 liters of liquid yeast and that gets the fermentation going and this is where the alcohol is created. But um, the alcohol is created after 40, 44 hours and stays at around 8% alcohol. But after that you have a lactobacterial fermentation that actually creates a lot of wanted flavors that are fruity, citrusy. And this is enhanced by the fact that they're actually using uh, wooden wash bags. They have the lactobacterial uh, growing inside the woods. Obviously, they do always the steam cleaning, but there's a bit, little bit left, and it just gives the, the, uh, the surrounding area that, that touch that gets the um, fermentation going and these flavors growing. So after 55 hours, they, all the flavors and all the alcohol is produced the way that actually Buna Haven wants it to be and then it's off to the distillation. The Buna Haven still house with its really big stills and their old pier shape is really something to show off and I think it's kind of unique within the, the yeah, whole whiskey industry to have these nice pier shaped big stills. Um, yeah although the uh, wash stills do have a uh, capacity of over 30,000 liters. They're being filled with 17,500 liters and the spirit stills are filled with 10,000 liters, although you can uh, actually could have a capacity of 15,500 liters. And that's due to the fact that you actually do want to have a separation of alcohol and they have really tall stills. So that really enhances the separation of alcohol and gives you more of a, a fine spirit that comes out. And that is what the Bundesheim distillery is actually looking for. They're looking at a, a, a light, fruity, citrusy character of spirit. That is actually what they are aiming for. And they're doing it quite well. So 17,500 liters per wash, uh, per wash still means that you have to have four charges of a wash back into the wash stills to produce a uh, one batch of spirit and that is about roughly 10,000 liters. If you add up that all around the year and now they're actually on a seven day schedule, they come up with about 3.5 million liters of output per year, 
which is really a lot and they upped it quite a bit so that is really good because then yeah there will be more spirit going into the cask and there will be more spirits into the future to be enjoyed by yeah you and me <laughs> that is really good so after we've created this light fruity spirit it's actually going to get enhanced the flavor is getting better when we have them inside the warehouse I'm here at the filling store of Bunnerhaven and Bunnerhaven has well a lot of warehouses and they have about 15,000 casks on site some of their casks have to go off site just insurance reason if everything burns down here then uh, they still can continue the brand and rebuild the brand but not everything is then lost they also have to store a few other casks from the whole company on site so not just uh, Bunnerhaven casks are included in these 15,000 casks on site. Of course, they are looking for more warehouse space, every distillery does. And yeah, let's talk, talk a little bit about uh, casking because casking is also a, yeah, a precious thing. You have to really look for a tight cast. They have a little bit of a repair store here where you can uh, see you have leaks there. You can hammer in little uh, little bits to, to stop the leaks. And also the every cask has a weak point and that's the bung. The bung, if you see a lot of casks, if they're not quite upright, you see that there is leakage coming from the bung because the bung is just a, yeah, a natural hole in the cask and is never that tight. If you then have controllers who say, oh yeah, palletized warehouses where cask standing are much better because they're much closer together and there's much more warehouse space, then you realize a lot that there is uh, just whiskey dropping down from the bung because it's not that tight and the standing cask is even worse for that. So uh, if you have an American standard barrel, it's just easy. It has a normal kind of normal bung, but there are various sizes of bungs. This here is uh, two and a quarter inch, two and a half inch and two and five eighths. So one eighth then more than two and a half. And every cask that is being dumped or filled, every time a cask is filled, they use a new bung. It's that important to have new bungs in your cask and hammer them in really, really tightly. They are nearly, nearly uh, flat because they hammer them in so tightly that it's just that natural hole that you have there must be sealed as good as possible because that cask might be there for 20 years and uh, you don't want to have any leakage there. Yeah, so this was it with the production at Bunnerhaven. And yeah, now well, let's get into a little bit of a tasting of the whiskey. So this was it with the production. And now we're having a little tasting and interview here uh, in the visitor center. So I'm sitting here with Katie van Capellen. Yes. So you're tour guide here already one year on the on, in the distillery. Yeah. So thank you very much for showing us around and showing us the whole distillery and you're telling very us everything. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, that was that was lovely. It's it's a wonderful distillery. Oh yeah, I'm very lucky to work here. Yeah, it's a it's a wonderful place. You just the, the sound of Isla is just sometimes flows that way sometimes flows that way <laughs> yeah never get tired of the view especially like the wet with the weather being so changeable so it's like mm. the, the view always just changes depending on how the light catches it so yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's never a, boring <laughs> it's a beautiful place but still it's a bit remote yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh nice we talked a lot about whiskey so what are we having today so we're starting off with our 12 year old so mm -hmm. that'll be the first one that we'll have today it's our flagship it's the first single mm -hmm. malt um, whiskey we ever released so mm -hmm. um yeah can't can't come to bonahaven without trying a little bit of our 12 year old uh, mm -hmm. i would say and then we've got the 18 after that mm -hmm. and um uh distillery exclusive so uh, um, it's a warehouse nine cast so it's a single cast that we'll be mm -hmm. trying um, after that um, a manzanilla sherry cast so um, yeah <laughs> always a big fan of the, the sherry cast over here and then the last one will be our festival bottle one of our festival um, bottles um, from this year so it'll be the peated um, festival bottle um, that we just um, released last week so um, yeah very exciting stuff <laughs> yeah I'm really excited about, about what I'm getting here well let's start with the cold range then yes yes so uh, i think you can pour it all right no worries so the the 12 year old is that uh how much sherry is in there 
So it's about 75% sherry matured and 25% bourbon matured. So okay. beautiful little marriage we've got going on there. So as you can see, it's got a beautiful colour to it as well. So that's coming from that sherry um, as well. So. So, and that is one of these uh, non-peated ones. Yes, one. so the first <laughs> three are all non-peated. So it's, oh, only, okay. it's only the last one that will be peated. We've actually only got one peated whiskey in our core mm. range, so. Um. <laughs> Ooh, oh yeah, that mm. is. Sherry, oh, is sherry. Sherry, sherry, <laughs> sherry. And, and so beautiful, light and sweet and fruity. Yes. A little bit of nuttiness going mm -hmm. on as well. And that yeah. lovely sea salt as well. Mm -hmm. always, if, if I look at your stills, they're so straight. And mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, that must be spicy. But it's always how you work the stills as well. Yeah. So to, if, you, if you don't want it to be spicy, you, I think you can, if you, if you really set your, your parameters right, you can do a really spicy one. But yeah. obviously you won't, don't want to. <laughs> nah, prefer to go for like, the lovely, oh, a lovely smooth, <laughs> sweet spices um, and then that that combination of the kind of the sherry and the and the, the bourbon as well like that lovely kind of vanilla and caramel that you get from that bourbon is mm -hmm. just beautiful but it's a light awesome. one it, it's really yeah. you feel it's a sherry touch to it yeah you have that bourbon character as, as a nuance in there mm -hmm. usually it's just yeah bourbon character with something this is more of a sherry character with something <laughs> yeah well we always like to say you're Tip, you're bona having, we're sherried. Like that's what we're about <laughs> over here. So even in our 12 year old, even when we do add a little bit of bourbon, yeah. we always want to make sure that sherry is, you know, uh, you know the star. <laughs> okay, slide it. Slide it. <laughs> mm. 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 Beautiful. Mm. That is sweet and smooth, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it has a bit of that marine touch to it. Yes. It has a bit of an Isla touch to it, exactly. although not PT, uh -huh. it has a bit of the, that marine touch to it, yeah. but just the nuance, the, the sherry, the red fruits, the berries, mm -hmm. mm, a little bit of a bourbon touch in there as well, but mm -hmm. it has a bit of like, I don't know, seaweed or phenolic, but yes. just as a nuance. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like that little touch that to me, like that's what kind of makes it an Isla whiskey. Like that's what you can really, bite. you can really tell it's an Isla whiskey mm -hmm. just by that little, little kind of the sea salt spray. Mm -hmm. um, it is um, just- I lovely. love it. It's, it's, it's I love it always about the whiskey. Mm -hmm. It's so different. They're yeah. always so different. There's always something different about every distillery. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why there's no real like, rivalry on the island because we're all <laughs> so different. So, we, yeah, we're all fans of all the other distilleries as well. So. <laughs> yeah, I think the island is a nice community. Yeah. It's, it's just, I love it when you drive on the road and like, everybody's like... <laughs> Waving, yeah. And you, you just start to do it as well. Well, it's a small community. Yeah. So, and, you know, most people are employed by the distilleries as well. So, we all get along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so... The last time I was here it was in 2015, uh -huh. so uh, when I came here it was just feeling different. I couldn't really make out what the different was. So you had an expansion, I think it was 2019 mm -hmm. you mentioned. So what was like the expansion, what, what did you do? So we really needed a new visitor center. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the old one was really just up the stairs really high. And, and then we moved into like a, another like very small tasting room, like closer uh -huh. to the pier. Um, uh, so yeah, we really needed a new visitor center. So a lot of money went into creating this beautiful little visitor center we've got over here. Mm -hmm. So it's actually, it's, it's been great. So we actually get to enjoy, we actually get, get to look at the view as well. We've got windows uh, <laughs> so we can kind of, you know, enjoy the view a bit more and people can sit outside and have their jams outside. So yeah, um, that visitor center that was built. Um, we actually, we were open for two weeks before we got to close again. Because uh. of lockdown. <laughs> so it's only like now that we're actually really getting to show it off because, mm -hmm. you know, people are finally starting to travel again after COVID. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but when uh, the other thing that we did is we kind of painted all the walls white as well. So um, <laughs> yeah, that yeah. Was it. if you visited us before, I think it was 2019 around that time. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of, if you look at any of the old LCA to 
book. If you look at any of our old TripAdvisor reviews, the word Alcatraz was mentioned quite a few times. <laughs> so we really wanted to do something about that and make it look a bit more welcoming, a bit, bit you know. Um, so yeah, it definitely, I mean, it, it definitely looks a lot more welcoming and less industrial now. Yeah, uh, you've done a little refurbishing here yeah. and there. You realise that when you come here. I think the stills, uh, two of them, the new spirits still, or not, not new spirits, but the yeah. spill stills are polished now. Yes, yeah. yeah. We want to make it look all shiny and nice, you know, like a lot more welcoming um, than, uh, than it was before. Yeah. Um, but some people miss the old look. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do think, uh, uh, I mean, the, your, your gate is still the old stones. Yes. And people, at some point, where there was like, yeah, you had a bit of a, um, not concrete, like the walls were a little, little bit falling mm -hmm. down at some place so the <laughs> i think the white is really good but i i did like the the stony touch to it like yeah. with all the stones but i i think both is nice so yeah if, if you keep the stone like gate that's awesome. yeah i think they we did a good job at like <laughs> just like making it look a lot more welcoming making it look a bit, bit more modern without going over the top like mm -hmm. it still feels like Bonahaven when you come yeah. down here and it's not like it's not like the shiny new facility. <laughs> it still feels like Bonahaven. It's just a little bit more I don't know, refined, polished. <laughs> it just looks yeah. a bit I think if nice. you want to be a modern history you need a lot more glass, steel and concrete. Yeah. <laughs> but I think Bonahaven is just fine. But uh, you also did the 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 bio uh Yeah, the biomass plant. So mm -hmm. um we're still in the commissioning stages of it, but um yeah, it's good. Okay, stuff. that's so, still ongoing. Yeah, so um but yeah we're burning we're now burning our draft so like half of our draft is getting sent to the biomass mm -hmm. plant um to burn it along with the um, local wood chip just to produce you know energy for the distillery. So obviously every distillery we've all got a target we all got all got to make sure we're kind of net zero by I think it's 2030 um, but we're the the first the first ones on the island to you know get there essentially so this is what we're doing to you know kind of do our bit and you know care about sustainability and all that because you know obviously we're gonna have to find new ways to <laughs> yeah be green. It, it sounds great I, I think these these uh, biomass plans are still yeah. a bit uh, bit to test it out they're a yes. bit hard to 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 manage but i think they will will eventually get in the future to exactly where they want and to be. you can't you can't like improve it without trying it out first you know you need to mm -hmm. Um, so, um, but yeah, again, it is, it's good, especially like with, we're not, like we're trying to just reduce our waste in general. So, yeah. um, yeah. Yeah. And that, that's a good thing. You, you, you don't have waste and you don't do, uh, do have energy out of that. So yeah. it's, it's yeah. win -win. Although the, uh, the cattle will get enough. Yeah. I mean, I have <laughs> never seen an unhappy cow in Isla, so, um, <laughs> they're all very happy. <laughs> they get plenty of draft from all the other distilleries. There's nine at the moment, but there'll be 10 soon. So plenty yeah, and, of, uh, and all the output yeah. is getting up so that they will get enough draft. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think I had the 18 before. You, you want to pour? Yes, of course. And I think that was a, I think we already gave it a little bit of an award, I think. Oh. I think the uh, have an 18 was, yeah. And as I can see, it's, it's probably have a really high mm. sherry content. Well, it's all sherry. <laughs> it's all <laughs> it's sherry. It's all uh, sherry. Hi so all. all of the older Bunahavans <laughs> are all sherry matured mm -hmm. because, well, the ones in our Korean jar anyway. So this is all all the Rosso sherry matured. So mm -hmm. all the Rosso, very rich, fruity, sweet sherry. And this is my favourite Bonahaven whiskey, um, mm -hmm. 18 year old. Um, it is. I always say I think this is dangerously good. I oh, can't just yeah. have one dram of it. <laughs> I always get a bottle just to like, and I want to like kind of keep it as long as I can, but I always just end up finishing it <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sooner the, than I want the to. Having, the Bunda Haven 18, yeah, dangerously sipping good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just something with the sherry that is just amazing. I think any Bonahaven aged in all or also sherry, it is always a recipe for success. It just, yeah. it just, yeah, works so well with our spirit. Yeah, and the thing is, eighteen to twenty-one is just perfect time for mm. Scotch whiskey. Yeah, if it's aged like in the really you know, Dunwich style mm -hmm. Isla environment, then eighteen to twenty-one is just so well in terms of uh, the perfect timing. Yes. Mm. That's a bit more intense than I, I uh, remembered. Yeah. Mm. So, slanger? Slanger there. <laughs>
Mm. Oh. <laughs> mm. 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 So incredibly rich. Mm. Mm. You have a good amount more of that fruitiness, but the fruitiness is not as fresh as in the 12 years. It, yeah. It's much more dried fruitiness, yeah. dark fruitiness, grapes, yeah. mm, a little bit of a chocolatey note yes. going on. Oh, that is intense. What's, are you all going with 46.3? That's yes. your thing, right? So 46.3%. Mm. Um, all of our Cool Range whiskies are 46.3%. Oh, I love it. And all the colouring as well, it's, uh, we do not add any artificial colourings um, mm -hmm. in our whiskies. So all that colour is just coming from those beautiful Oloroso sherry casks. Um, so, yeah, mm -hmm. it's just, uh, it's one of those jams. It's beautiful to look at <laughs> and even better to, to drink. <laughs> mm -hmm. that, is, that is nice. <laughs> oh, I love it. So... Your logo is kind of a, a helmsman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. That's so what, what's what's the story behind that? So so born I have and we've got, got a kind of interesting yeah interesting history. So we were built in 1881, mm -hmm. and back when they built the distillery, you know, the only way to get here would have been by boat <laughs> as well. So oh, okay. Uh, so they kind of built a little community here, like a little village here. They had a little school. They had a shop here. So just to house all the all the distillery workers. Um. So yeah, Bonahaven. Yeah, that's the kind of the the helmsman's a kind of little a little kind of nod to the the past, uh, mm -hmm. but also, um, um, I don't know if you've heard of the song Westering Home. Oh yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a very nice song, um, um, I think the, it was originally sung by the Corrie, so definitely check it out. And um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's a song about Isla and you know, Sealand Isla, um, so um, yeah, it's a bit of a yeah a nod to that. So Yeah, bringing on all the sherry cast yeah. And, and yeah, so that's why you Okay, you really didn't have a road. That is really a different, different yeah. story. If you don't mm -hmm. have a road to the town, it's just a <coughs> secluded town without yeah. a road. Interesting. Yeah, it must have been much different feeling back then. Yeah, definitely, mm -hmm. definitely. Even mm -hmm. now, I mean, our road is a, a long way down here. <laughs> oh, it is, and uh, a bit of a bumpy one yeah. as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of a bumpy one. Yeah. <laughs> so, but that wasn't built until the nineteen sixties. So nineteen sixties. Yeah. Wow, okay. Ooh, that that is quite a long time without the road. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so the next one you said is a Mazzanilla. Yes. So this is one of our Warehouse 9 um, mm -hmm. maturations. So it's a distillery exclusive. Okay. Uh, always exciting. <laughs> so um, what we do in our Warehouse 9 is we'll, we'll have casks in there that we'll use for the Warehouse 9 tastings. People can try it straight from the tap casks. Um, but um, we'll also fill these bottles on site as well. Um, so they're only sold here. Mm -hmm. And um, this was a full maturation in a Manzanilla sherry cask. So just one single cask, obviously the 12 and the 18 year old, they're marriages of multiple casks, you know, together. And this is just one cask. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you... Is it also 63.6? Uh, no, uh, so this is cask, cask strength. We do not this dilute them strength. at all. So this one is 58.6%. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I hope you had a good lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I did, I did. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if you want to have one of these bottles, you have to get to Come and visit and us. have to do, yeah. do the visit to it. But they, they do change regularly. They do they? change. Yeah. Obviously, once a cask is empty, mm -hmm. a new one will take mm -hmm. its place. And it's always very sad when they leave us. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but there's there's always one available. There's yeah. always like a new yeah. one available as mm -hmm. well. So, okay. um, yeah. So, but it keeps it interesting for us as well, you know? Yeah, it's always the the thing when you have these limited edition or the still mm -hmm. exclusive or single cast, then uh, at some point you you do get something that you really love and you can't get that anywhere else, but it is just a point of time and it will be gone in the future at some point. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the, the fun, the, the, I think the, the fun part with single cask is every cask is different. So we ha we'll have si uh, sister casks available sometimes too, and they'll, every cask will just have its own kind of unique uh, flavour. So yeah, just because that something was aged in the same type of cask for the same length of period, or even in the same warehouse, doesn't mean that it's going to taste the same in yeah. the end. So sometimes you get a, a few really nice or like interesting surprises <laughs> as well. Oh um, yeah, that, that is... 
that's nice. Yeah, that's the, that's the cool thing. Maybe you can't have that anymore, but there's always something new coming up. Yeah. And that is the beauty of it. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that, that's about whiskey. You have so many differences. Mm -hmm. uh, you can even have differences between li so, such a small thing as a cask. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so Ooh. Have it. Mm. Is, ma uh, is, <laughs> is mazzanilla, is that... Is that uh, like a semi-dry or dry? Or it's a dry that? sherry. It's a dry very pale sherry, yeah. dry sherry. It's quite similar to a fino sherry, um, oh, okay. but it, it's just a bit more, it's a bit racier. It's a bit more salty as well because mm -hmm. it's made right by the sea. Obviously, we've aged this right by the sea as well. So you'll, <laughs> you'll, you'll might, you might pick up on some extra salt. <laughs> okay. um, it's also very, uh, quite a floral dram as well. Mm, yeah, so. definitely. It, it, it's strange that I, I expected something like 18 yeah, dried yeah. fruits and it's, it's nice, floral, uh, yeah. fresh. A mm -hmm. little bit of that, yeah, Isla touch to it, as yeah. you said, see, yeah, a bit of an iodine in there, mm -hmm. but just the nuance on that. Mm, yeah. Mm. Oh, I love it. Definitely. Love it. Yeah, it's 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 totally different to to the eighteen and the twelve now. Well, that's why I thought it'd be yeah. interesting to kind of compare because mm. a lot of the times people do kind of they, they they're surprised when I tell them this is sherry oh. because obviously it's very light in color, yeah. but sherry comes on a spectrum. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sherry is not sherry. It's like yeah, scotch is not yeah scotch. There's tons of different scotch. Yeah. No, oh, I love it. It's it's so light and fresh. Yeah. No. Slide your ass. Slide your ass. Mmm. Mmm. Ah. Mmm. <laughs> 58 has a good, quite kick. Yeah. It is quite mm. crisp as well. Mm. But, um, I'll have some water with my next sip then. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is... Mm. But it is sweeter than I expected. There's still a bit of a sweetness to it, which is it's mm. a, it brings like, it gives a, a nice mm. balance. You know, there's a lovely balance between the sweetness and the dryness of it, mm. which I love. To me, this just tastes like summer. So just imagine drinking this on a beach somewhere with a little bit of cheese or something. Yeah, <laughs> it has a bit of a when you first have it in your mouth, it has a bit of a bourbon touch to it, mm. but then it turns into something flowery or yeah. something something fresh fruity mm -hmm. that is usually not associated with the 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 bourbon cast so it, ha it really has a touch to it uh, yeah yeah i love these these uh single casts i don't drink them often enough uh, mm -hmm. because they have just a um a unique way of showing stuff yeah mm. Mm. oh just a smidge of water just opens it up and makes it even much more sweeter and Mm. And a bit rounder as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fifty-eight is just a bit, <laughs> a bit <laughs> over my usual zone. I, I tend to go good. with with fifty-two, fifty-four, and then I uh, usually do a bit of water in there. Yeah, we have one that's sixty-one percent uh, oh, as yeah. well. So it's <laughs> or not messing around here. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Um, so um, the next one is face ale. Tell yes. me a bit about the. The Face Ale as a festival. So you're an islander, right? Yeah. Well, I've lived here for the last four years. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, so, but um, yeah, Face Isla, best time. Well, <laughs> our busiest time to come to Isla. Best time if you love crowds and music <laughs> and whiskey. If you don't like big crowds, don't come during the festival week. <laughs> um, yeah. So festival week, last week of May, every single year. So all the distilleries will have like like uh, big open days. So there'll be it's a whiskey and music festival. So there'll be okay. uh, live performances and lots and lots of whiskey. <laughs> lots, and lots, <laughs> lots and lots of whiskey. So how's the like uh, the the atmosphere around on the island? Oh, it is <laughs> so. I mean, for the tourists, it's great. <laughs> it's like very exciting um, stuff. But I think a lot of locals get a bit scared around that time. So you'll, the week before festival, you'll see like a lot of people like lining up at the co-op with big trolleys and just buy everything, <laughs> just stock up so they don't have to leave their house <laughs> during the festival time. So um, yeah, it gets really, really busy. Obviously, Isla, small island, small com small community. So about three thousand 
500 people live here uh -huh. and around festival time I think it goes up to like 17,000 or something ridiculous so like that these people all stay ah well they'll have there be camper vans <laughs> tents people you know, they'll, they'll rent like Airbnb houses but they'll they'll have like 70,000 people living in one house <laughs> <laughs> still staying in one house so it just so it everything goes, is sold out during yeah the everything is sold out during festival so people actually have to pre-book it like two three years in advance sometimes uh, if they want oh, to come okay. over yeah but again yeah. Yeah, I've seen yeah. I've seen the the Carl Mac ferries. They have a I think a special shipping plan for yeah. things. <laughs> Due to the festival, we have the following shippings as well. Yes, so you have to if you do want to come over around festival time, you have to be very well prepared. <laughs> uh, but it's definitely worth it. And every distillery will re will release a few like special releases. Okay. And this is our one of our special releases from this year okay. and it just came out a bit earlier this year so it came out last week already okay. um, and this is a peated whiskey Ooh, so we, uh, yeah the peated yeah. one you mentioned so we always gonna... release a peated one around the festival time as well <laughs> just to give people like you kind know, of the best of, best of both worlds you know um, and so this is a monia triple cask so Monia is Gaelic for peat or smoke. Mm -hmm. um, so um, if you see most Bonahavens that are peated will have that word on it as well. So if you see a Bonahaven whiskey out there that's got the word Monia written on it, it's spelled M-O-I-N-E. That mm -hmm. is Gaelic for peat. So this is a Monia triple cast. So I'll give you a wee pour of that and yeah. then I'll... So you I'll said that it. was like, is it uh, 40 ppm then? Yes, around that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Oh, that, that bottle is going well, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've had lots of people and wanted a we taste of it. So this is actually the second time I'm trying this because it only came out last week. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited to have another wee taste of it. Um, it was delicious uh, when I tried it last week. So um, yeah, uh, looking oh, forward to it. So we've gone for a, a triple cask this year. Oh. So we've got, we've got the easiest way to explain it is to start with the bourbon. So bourbon is one of the three casks yeah. and mm -hmm. the bourbon was a full maturation mm -hmm. um, in, um, in ex-bourbon casks. Mm -hmm. Then we also have Oloroso, which was a finish. So it was in American oak and then put into a bourbon cask in 2000, um, um, in American yes. oak and then put into an Oloroso, Oloroso sherry cask in 2013. And then we also have um, a rum cask finish as well. And the rum cask. Yes. Okay, that is a strange triple. Yes, so we've got <laughs> Oloroso, bourbon and rum. Okay. And so what they're trying to do like with this one was trying to create like this kind of lovely like rum and raisin ice cream. <laughs> okay, yeah, that, that uh, sounds like a flavors. mixture. Um, so that was what they were going for and yeah, it is. And c combination oh, with that yeah. 40 ppm is yeah. just giving it so, so much so much difference mm. to the others it's just amazing i love it uh, i think that will be heard on the island on the festival oh yeah mm. i'm loving it just by the and you get those kind of like like it's like getting the tropical notes on the nose as well mm. like like a bit of pineapple maybe like from the rum mm. um i'm definitely excited to like with like, see more rum finishes as well oh yeah it's always keeps it interesting <sighs> Yeah, it's 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 fresh again, mm -hmm. but a different kind of fresh. I love it how how it can. This one is fresh and fruity. This one is fresh and fruity, but other. I'm I'm really struggling to explain that how it is fre more fresh and fruity. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because it's it's a bit. Yeah, with with more cast comes more complexity and, yeah. and uh, more difficulty to explain. Yeah. Mm. Oh, but I like it. Yeah. yeah. Slide Slide it. There you go. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. 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 I like it that you have a the peatiness is is there, mm -hmm. but it's a bit separate from the that Isla touch. It yes. has the same Isla touch as let's say the 18 or the mm -hmm. 12, so it doesn't really come from that phenolic peatiness, but mm. from the from more, I would guess, maturation, mm -hmm. and it has that fresh fruitiness and a little bit of that sweetiness, maybe, yeah. maybe that rum sweetiness yeah. in it as well. I love that. Mm. 
Yeah, and what I love about our repeated whiskey as well is like it doesn't quite like slap you in the face as well. Yeah, it doesn't. It's it's more of a kind of aftertaste, so get that initial like sweetness from the from from mm. the uh, the rum and the the uh, all the Rosso and bourbon, but then you get that lovely kind of smoke at the back just to mm -hmm. leave you nice and warm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I love our, I love, I love the way that they are, uh, just that effect that the peated whiskey has on the... All about the peatiness yeah. builds. Yeah. So when you have builds. a second sip, yeah. then it builds on the mm. first sip. So yeah, it doesn't slap you in the face, mm. it builds up. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And people, people tend to forget that. You don't just have like the, the Southern Island. Yeah peatiness of Isla, you yes. have the the other floor um, like the other bonfire, levels yeah. of, of peatiness that are all, all around the the island and that is a like a nice medium peaty. Mm. It doesn't feel quite twenty. Okay, it's seventeen years yeah. that is also losing a bit peatiness in there. Mm -hmm. I like it. It's a it's a well balanced complex whiskey. I think yes. that, that's gonna really hit yes. the festival. And I just have to say I think our master blender Julianne, she does a great job at just picking out these casts and just mm. knowing like what is gonna work together very mm. well. Um so uh mm. Yeah, that combination of those three casts, it's just beautiful. It just melts in your mouth. It's like, to me, it reminds me a little bit of like a creme brulee. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> now that I have it in my mouth a bit longer, yeah. in the back of my mouth, it's really sweet. In the front of my mouth, mm -hmm. it, that's just the, the peat smoke staggering. Mm -hmm. uh, I like it. I like it. it and and you're going, oh, 52. Um, yeah, 52%. So again, so lovely cast strength. <laughs> for 52%, it's quite round. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Mm. But oh. again, if you do want to add a drop of water. <laughs> no, uh, I'm, I'm fine. 52 is good. Yeah. And that, that is really, really nice. Mm. Yeah, so... That was our range. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for having us at the distillery. Well, thank you for uh, yeah coming to visit us. Yeah, and, <laughs> and thank you for all the whiskey and explaining all the, the the stuff to us. Yeah. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and thank you very much for watching. If you found this video interesting, then please feel free to share it with your friends, and see you next time.